on Truth Detective with Stephanie Lee. The main core topic of the episode is based on the truth. And in most episodes, some of the events, people, places, pseudonyms, and the lifestyle that I lead as a truth detective are fictionalized for a better storytelling experience. For each episode, go to the show notes for more information on the topic. Enjoy this episode. Welcome. This is Truth Detective with Stephanie Lee. Dystopian Stories. The Assignment In a modern-day dystopia world of 2036, where individual freedom is a distant memory, the government dictates every aspect of citizens' lives. Your very own truth detective has found some devious actions in the works. Yes, we all know that any type of true American education as we knew it is a relic of the past, a luxury reserved only for the elite echelons of society. The middle and lower classes are discouraged from pursuing education beyond what the government deems necessary for their assigned roles in society. You see, everyone's assigned roles are based on many things, family, class, and potential proven skills or the lack of skills. There is no choice in the matter for these unfortunate students. Tests will be given to evaluate each young person. What class, lower or middle, is your family in? The education system is given to the federal and the individual state government, that is, the Department of Education, and it also depends on the racial demographics and socioeconomics of each state and what each state's natural resources are that will, in turn, result in jobs from the citizens of that state. This was not to my liking or any of my detective colleagues' liking. If your state resource is coal, for example, then working in the coal mines is your fate. If your state resource is chalk, then working in the chalk mines is your fate. And so on. This, it is believed, will result in fairness to all. No one will be above anyone else. There will be no more meritocracy. Yes, it was the truth. You will do what you are told or suffer the consequences, whatever it may be. There will not be any decisions about your future. And it is a severe crime in today's America to even think that there is. It certainly wasn't that way when I was growing up, but that was 40 years ago. And as history has proven, many things can change in far less time. We detectives navigate this oppressive society where one's fate is predestined by not just the federal government, but also by the state. Yes, all citizens are zombie-like now, going to and from their respective jobs. Most people hated what they were paid to do. I heard words like unrewarding, mundane, and boring when asking about the work these American citizens were doing, jobs that were good for the state's economy and had no individual rights involved. Everyone who was a truth-seeking detective in today's America was a detective when American society started to change. We were already college-educated investigative researchers by our choosing. In other words, we chose to be in our detective roles at a very young age, by choice. So we were, in effect, grandfathered in. We were secure in our profession as detectives, even though the government didn't like it. They had no choice but to accept what we did 40 years ago. My colleagues and I harbored a curiosity about the world beyond our profession. Questioning the system is a dangerous game. We all know that. It now was a society where dissent is swiftly punished. We may not have started as dissenters, but we were dissenters now. The America we knew was indeed no more. 
We detectives were troublemakers. That's why we must keep a low profile, even if we have permission to continue with our careers. As we delve into this, our latest case, a series of mysterious disappearances from the Department of Education that the government dismisses as irrelevant are uncovered, and a hidden network of a rebellious anonymous group emerges. This group who dare to challenge the status quo. Well, we detectives found through an unknown but reliable source that some teachers are teaching what is called wrong think, a term used to describe firstly the dumbing down of education, which doesn't necessarily allow a student to move ahead in their educational goals, but also the anti-American agenda. Didn't we know America was bad and if you were American, shame on you. And so it was. This rebellious anonymous group believed in the same things we do, in the power of knowledge and the importance of critical thinking and education, readying an individual for a career of their choosing, rather than an oppressive educational system deciding the career for each person, and, of course, thinking what the government decides it wants students to know. American values and traditions that we detectives and baby boomers hold dearly in our hearts are to be no longer taught. And so it is, we wanted to reclaim freedom for all who wanted to have any education, whether K-12, through a trade school, or a college education. In other words, freedom to choose what a person's career path would ultimately be. After all, everyone ought to be able to have individual rights, individual thoughts, and actions about the future they wish to lead. We grew up that way, so why change something that's not broken, right? We detectives and the rebellious anonymous group are growing strong in our desire to break free from the constraints placed upon our youth and the American way of life, which of course includes education. In other words, the old way of American life, making decisions about schooling, future salary, and whatever socioeconomic level in life that ought to be up to you, me, and everybody. As we unravel the truth behind the disappearance of these Department of Education officials mentioned earlier, who were educational dissenters, quote-unquote, we begin to question everything we have ever known. Why does the government fear the original education system? Are they afraid of empowering our citizens to think for themselves? The answer, I'm afraid, is yes. Through my research at the library, I find an article on the Heritage Foundation website. It states that your children are being indoctrinated by the education system originally designed to teach them how to think critically and lately has been weaponized by the radical left to push an anti-American agenda. Well, the left uses a combination of propaganda and suppression to push kids into socialism and anti-patriotism. It is brainwashing authentic American history. Lessons were being censored and decidedly being left out of our educational system. I believe this is true, and so do all of us detectives who went deep into the rabbit holes. After all, this was once the greatest country in the world. We truth seekers grew up learning about America, and through that, education had a level of patriotism that I, for one, was very proud of. This, we understand, is the dumbing down of America through our current educational system. There is no room for our minds, critical thinking, and individual thoughts. The only room is what those in power want you to know. After all, it's so much better to control the populace. As my colleagues and I research deeper, utilizing the rebellious anonymous group that we've become a part of, we discover the true extent of the government's control over society. Jobs are not designed based on individual skills or passions, but on what the government deems most beneficial to maintain their power. The concept of meritocracy is a distant memory, replaced by a rigid hierarchy that stifles creativity and innovation. It's horrible. Through our journey, we never waver or grapple with the moral dilemma of upholding the oppressive educational system that has defined our modern life. We naturally have joined the rebellious anonymous group in their fight 
for educational freedom. There is power in numbers, and as we uncover the government's darkest secrets, we, rebels and fact-finders, realize, of course, the obvious. The key to dismantling the oppressive regime lies in the power of knowledge and education. How can we stop them? We didn't know at first, and it was a gamble, but we would give it a try. This, we all agree, is our best bet to prove to the global community that education is the way out of this demonic world we now live in. We go to pirate radio stations and use our ham radio licensed detectives to let Americans know of their nefarious activities. We protest and set up makeshift booths outside busy box stores. And sure enough, word got out. It began to spread to all states of the Union what the evil intentions were. Unbelievably, parents listened and teachers actually resigned in huge numbers. We all must decide what type of world we want. Yes, we must dream of a better society. We now know we will fight their awful regime like never before and point it out to everyone and hope people listen and make the change. We will not allow this future of our society that is on the brink of collapse, but rather we look to a future where every man, woman, and child oversees their own destiny. And so as soon as we detectives started getting the word out, they, those devils, in charge had no power. The Board of Education, dissenters that I mentioned earlier in the episode, were freed from a hell-like prison for speaking out against the educational system that they had to teach under. We were so gloriously happy that we all celebrated with drinks, cakes, candies, and feasts of all sorts. The Department of Education and our American government overturned their hideous, drastic anti-American education system. After all, there were more of us than them. This allowed students to choose, rightly so, their endeavors, whatever they may be. We had won this battle, but there would be more. We were ready for them no matter what. With the assistance of these rebellious anonymous groups that kept showing up, we were determined to make all the changes that would bring our country and ultimately the world to a beautiful place that we needed and deserved.